24 years I lived in the UK before visiting Scotland and it only took a couple of hours to steal my heart. I'm Jasmine and this is my partner Mark, the only person I know willing to drive hundreds of miles, sleep on the hard ground, inevitably end up drenched in the rain and eating alive by midges and still call it a good time. Lost. Very lost. Are. But let's rewind. Two years ago, we sat on our living room floor watching back-to-back -back YouTube videos, pens and notebooks scattered around us, planning our first road trip, the famous NC500. Now this was our first trip, so we didn't quite know what to expect. We planned our route from start to finish, booked all of our Airbnbs and campsites, and loaded up the car with everything but the kitchen sink, which ironically, would have actually come in handy. We drove over 500 miles over five days and were completely besotted, marvelled and exhausted by the end of it. But oh, did we fit a lot in. We visited castles, hiked up mountains, walked along beaches, caught the last zip wire of the day, made friends with lots of sheep, almost froze on 8am swims in the North Sea and drove in some of the most beautiful scenery I have ever seen. All in all, a breath of fresh air and the trip that started it all. But we did have some bumps in the road too. Trying to find campsites in the dark with no phone signal, only to arrive and there be no food available. Driving 10 hours home after a tiring week because we tried to fit in too much. Public toilets being locked due to COVID or for other reasons and having to constantly clock watch for timings. So last year, we did things a bit differently. We allowed more time and scrapped the detailed plans. We booked one Airbnb on the route up to the Highlands to break up our journey and one in the middle of the trip so we could get a shower and get ourselves reorganised. Oh, and England made it to the Euro finals, so of course we needed a TV to watch that. And the rest we decided to leave to fate and a tent and went wild camping. We packed a little better this time, swapping our airbed for a self-inflating mat, took our chemical toilet and privacy tent, the most fashionable midgy net hats to keep those little pests away, and took enough snacks and food to cook just in case. Oh, and we took wetsuits this time so Mark's legs didn't fall off from the cold. And it was brilliant. Nothing beats waking up in the fresh air watching the sunrise in a stunning location, ready to explore the highlands. Wild camping meant that we could camp in some amazing places. And one of the highlights was the two and a half hour walk we did to get to Sandwood Bay. And we had the beach all to ourselves. Of course, we had to go in for a swim before the mist came in and took away the view. We also popped over the bridge to the Isle of Skye and camped in some beautiful places on the island. The weather wasn't too great over there and unfortunately we didn't make it up to the old man of store. However, the rain couldn't stop us and we were still swimming in the fairy pools, in the drizzle and the fog, which made it even more magical. To make up for not climbing any mountains over there, we did make it to the top of Ben Nevis, which although extremely windy, was incredibly beautiful and so much more, but we'll save that for another day. So that brings us to now, July 2022, packing up the car once more and heading north for another Scotland adventure. And this time, we're taking you along with us. Did just have to get the cat out of the car. I think he wanted to come with us. Um, he was just sat on the passenger seat, eagerly waiting to go. First stop is Glasgow so it's going to take us about four hours to get there so we will stop at the service station on the way and yeah hoping to get there for about midday. There's a couple of places that I've looked up that look like good lunch spots and hoping the weather holds out um, so that we can go for a bit of a walk as well around Glasgow. So yeah we'll see you when we get there. So this trip we decided not really to plan and so far it's working out well. Instead of stopping at our services, we decided to stop at Gretna Green. It's Mark's never been before and I've been years and years and years ago. 
and it's beautiful. It's weird, you can already tell that we're in Scotland and we've only just crossed the border and we already feel like we're on holiday, which is lovely. So yeah, we're gonna go and have a wander around now, grab a coffee, quick toilet break, and then I think Mark's gonna take over some of the driving for a little bit. We've got about an hour and a half to get up to where we want to go in Glasgow, maybe a little bit less, um, but the roads are quiet, so we're going well so far. Mark's got his coffee now, he's happy. It's the age old debate about whether you put the cream on first or the jam on first and it's gone. So we're having a go at the courtship maze. The idea is that one of you starts at one entrance and the other person starts at the other. And the only way you can reconnect is if you make it through the maze and make it onto that bridge at the top. I absolutely hate mazes, but we're gonna give it a go. See if we manage to find our way out. We were already doing really well. We couldn't find the entrance. Are you ready? Okay. Bye. Oh, no. I might get lost. <laughs> Sun's come out though, which is very nice. I found you already. doesn't appear to be the most difficult maze in the world. Oh, someone's put locks on. Hello. It's all well and good coming into the maze. But then how do you get out of the maze? That's the bit I don't like about it. What if you just lost in here forever. I seem to be moving away from the bridge. Mark, I can see you, but I don't know how to get to you. Wait. <laughs> He's made it. He's made it to the top and I'm still trying to find my way around. So they got married in 2017 and then came back for their first wedding anniversary in 2018 on the same day. Obviously it was an anniversary. So we've just left Gretna Green. What did you think of Gretna Green? Uh, it was cute. It was cute. I wouldn't make a day of it. Uh, we stopped off and got a average coffee. I had a scone just as a snack. Um, we couldn't get to some of the places because I think there was a wedding going on at the time. But it was a nice little stop off. It was a lot better than stopping at the services and it did the job. We are now heading up to Glasgow. We've got our Spotify's Made in Scotland playlist on. And the sat nav's currently staying for about an hour and a half away. The sun did come out in Gretna but it's <laughs> not looking the best again now. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So we've arrived in Glasgow. We've just walked down a very cute street called Ashton Lane, which has got lots of 
restaurants, there was a theatre there and it looks like quite a cute place to eat. We have already picked where we're going for the day so we're gonna go there but first mistake of the day, parked up and just sat off walking. Didn't pay for the parking. <laughs> Don't know how we realised that but now we're on our way back to the car to pay and then we'll try and start the afternoon in Glasgow again. <laughs> Stopped for lunch at a place called Hillhead Book Club. It's got kind of a vintage charity shop kind of vibe. It's got good music though and the disco ball, which is always good. The drinks look pretty good. I'm on water. <laughs> but Matt's got a pint and he assures me it's very good. Yeah. They also do breakfast until 2 pm, which is very useful. I just ordered, uh, well it's half one now so we made it just in time but I've ordered an eggs benedict so I'm hoping it's going to be good and set us up for the rest of the journey. Found a cold. After lunch we visited the Glasgow Botanical Gardens it's free to enter and there are a couple of different sections for you to explore. The grounds themselves are really nice as well and a good place to sit and relax, especially if the weather's good. Like really pretty, really pretty abandoned shop. So we're back on the road after a lovely afternoon in Glasgow where we had lunch at Hillhead Book Club. Uh, that was really nice. And they do let kids and dogs in there as well if anyone's traveling up anytime soon. Um, we managed to find a car park quite like right in the centre called Lilybank and that was really easy to get to everything. We, I would recommend though that you download the Ringo app before you get here because depending on which network you're on the signal is quite patchy um, and it's £2.40 an hour so unless you've got coins to pay for that you do need the app. On the note of apps, download Waze instead of Google Maps because we've had a couple of roads that have been closed and that haven't come up on Google Maps and we've had to try and download Waze again with spotty signal so I definitely recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, we're on our way now trying to find some scenery on the way to well, where we're hoping to camp tonight but we don't know where that is yet so we'll see where we end up. So at that point in the trip where the shoes have been abandoned and we're driving additional hours just to find beautiful spots.
we made it to our final destination of the day. We actually really struggled to find somewhere to camp um, just because a lot of farmland was fenced off and a lot of places weren't able to park where there was places that would be great for camping. So we found this little spot just overlooking the water and now we are settling in for the night. We're going to make some food and yeah, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs>